Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Seek and Destroy, and today it's Sunday. Happy Sunday, everyone. Well, by the time you watch this later, it's probably not going to be Sunday. Um, but uh, today what I want to talk about is an independent comic book that was uh, that came out recently. It's by a friend of mine named Livio Ramadelli, so I will be honest. You know, I'm a little biased here on some level, but I will be honest as well as, as far as my feedback goes. Um, but Livio is someone I met years ago, and he was a Transformer artist. He still does. He does Transformer stuff. We talked about him recently on the Transformer show, Till All Are One, where we uh, talked about his construction con issue uh, transformers galaxies and we'll talk about more of those coming up when the fourth issue comes out we'll kind of discuss issues two through four all in one video uh, coming up for sure so you'll see more of his stuff very 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 soon uh, but today we're going to talk about his independent book uh, that he's writing and drawing and i'm so excited for him because i know for a while now he's wanted to do his own stuff and, and shop around his own ideas and kind of, uh, you know, do things that, you know, maybe are familiar for fans of his because he loves drawing robots. So it's still robot centric, uh, but, you know, also goes off in a different direction, a little bit more hardcore than something like Transformers. And I really am enjoying it uh, overall. The, the, the concept of this is really neat. And so the book is called Kill Lock. I think we talked about it uh, briefly on one of my live streams not too long ago, but I wanted to dive into it and, and tell you a little bit more about the story and about the first two issues and you know I'm probably going to spoil a few things so if you don't want any spoilers on this you know feel free to walk away now uh, but if you are interested in this book and and you're just looking for someone to give you feedback on it to see if you should go buy it or not I'll tell you a little bit about it so you can make up your own mind and then of course I'm going to give you my opinion as well uh, so first off we have kill lock number one and this really does set up the universe. Uh, it starts off, and it's uh, it's it's pretty awesome. It's just like this like amazing landscapes. You know, Levio is always really good at doing this kind of stuff, um, where he's got this amazing, uh, you know, he's like this soul character walking through the snow. And uh, they come across like this giant uh, town where there's like a bar, like a bunch of bars and stuff like that. And so you kind of see this amazing spread. And Levio's done some amazing stuff, not just Transformers, but he's done art for like Star Wars. And he's done these amazing things with like, you know, Darth Vader on Hoth. So when I saw this, I was instantly thinking of that imagery. And I'm like, yeah, man, this is awesome. Again, doing stuff that's familiar uh, for his fan base, but also, you know, going in a different direction. And that's what I really like that Levio's doing here is that he's like, yeah, I'm still doing stories on robots because I love robots. But... But, you know, it's going to be something that you aren't expecting. And that's what I really like because it starts off very quiet. And I, he's right. You know, in that regard, I wasn't expecting what comes next, which is this soul robot here called the Artisan walks into a, a bar. <laughs> a robot walks into a bar. It sounds like the start of a joke. Um, and he goes into a bar and he sees another robot and he's like starts, uh, you know, swearing at it. He's like, he's like, your effing face is ugly. You know, like you, you, you're you dumb. I can scan you like I'm an artisan robot. So I have the ability to kind of x-ray you and scan you and see your weaknesses and your flaws um, and your strengths and all that. And he goes, and I don't see any strengths on you. And he's like cutting this robot down who's sitting there, you know, trying to drink alone. <laughs> and it's like, and he's like, your face is ugly and I hate you. And, and you're just like, what is going on like it's it starts off like you're like wait why is he just insulting this this poor robot that's sitting there and then not only does he insult it but he, he's like i don't like your voice so i want i'm gonna i'm you know, you know psychically or whatever it's like he can kind of neuro link to things without touching them so he's able to shut off the robot's voice box he's like i hate your voice it's disgusting so i don't want to hear you talk anymore so then the bot can't talk and then he's like you know what i also don't like your brain so i'm going to melt that and you know and then eventually what happens is the robot is killed because you know he keeps turning things off uh, that are programmed inside the robot and the robot just you know hits the in his head on the counter and just is out and it looks like he just passed out drunk but really he was killed and while this happening uh, another robot walks in called the laborer and he's looking for the artist and he's like hey where did you sneak off to and he's like well i'm here aren't i and he goes he's like come on get out of here he's like we're, we're leaving and uh, he's like you sure you don't want to stay for a drink and he's kind of like taunting the laborer because as we learn later the laborer robot is, is actually uh, an alcoholic it's actually a, a drunk um so it's it's really neat. There's these really interesting characters. There's four total because uh, I'm not going to go through the book beat for beat. But basically, there's the the laborer who is like I said, he's like this big um, machine. I think his sole goal that they revealed in the second issue, like his his purpose for being, was that he had to open. Um, hatches for when planes you know come and go and then shut them when they, you know before they come and go or after they come and go and uh and so what happens is he accidentally leaves one down and uh, one night because i guess he was drunk and it causes a ship to crash into it or, or either that or he just maybe someone set him up we, we don't really know what the cause is yet uh but uh but he doesn't remember uh shutting the door he remembers leaving it open when he was scheduled to put it open 
And then he was, you know, told, oh, I'll, I'll go close it at this time. But unfortunately, a ship crashed into it while it was down. So he's got some blame because it was on his watch. And uh, and now he's, you know, um, locked in with these other three robots in something called the kill lock. And so the kill lock is basically this way to connect these four robots. You have the laborer, who I just talked about. You have the artisan, who is a, essentially a serial killer. He he was uh, he he was in charge of like you know he overlooked a lot of lesser robots, I guess. And uh, what he did was he could scan them and see their weaknesses. And I guess he just started killing his coworkers out of sheer boredom. He was just like, you know what, I'm I'm kind of tired of my goal, and I see other opportunities for other goals, and and I want to learn how things tick and how they work. And so he ends up killing his other co-workers. So he gets put on this kill lock as well. And then you have a giant, uh, like a, almost like a religious robot called the Wraith. And he goes around, he has this, this hardcore belief structure about innocence and guilty people or guilty robots and innocent robots or whatever. And he's kind of, uh, you know, uh, devout to this religion. And so when he meets people that are against his religion or think his religion is false, uh, they're kind of heretics in a way to him. Uh, so he apparently went on a killing spree at some point and maybe killed people that didn't deserve it, as we see in like a flashback. And then also there's one, the fourth robot called the Kid. And the kid is, we don't know, uh, we were told it was born with a defect and that defect could lead it to become like one of these other robots. Like basically robots are all built and programmed and told to do specific things, but sometimes robots get defects and they go off and they do their own things. Like this, when the laborer gets drunk and it causes a death, uh, you know, the artisan, he goes off and becomes a serial killer to his coworkers and the wraith snaps and accidentally kills an innocent. So these are all defects. And so this kid, is uh, essentially born with a defect and so they uh, um, immediately i guess uh, categorize it as a criminal and so that's how it gets put in the kill lock and the kill lock like i said uh or i started to say is this uh, thing that connects these four robots together and what it means is if one of these robots dies all four of them die and that's what the kill lock is it's uh, essentially something that ties them each together uh, whether it's a connection or a chip or whatever i don't know i imagine if it was a chip that the artisan would have found a way to shut it down so there's definitely a brand on them they have this brand here that's on the the cover this x you know over the x and stuff but you know um, multi-dimensional x's uh, that uh, that is the kill lock and so when you're branded with that it connects you to the others and that's what they're basically the the whole point of this story is that these four people or these four bots are looking for a cure like this there's been rumors that there's a way to get out of the kill lock uh, but they have they don't know of anyone who has been able to do it but they just want to believe in something because essentially they all agree minus the artisan he's still a psychopath but uh, the laborer and the wraith they both believe the kid is purely innocent he shouldn't be there he shouldn't be uh you know branded just because of the way he was born with the defect um they, they don't like that he was categorized like that and not given a chance to prove that defect wrong or whatever so uh so and i'm wondering if there's going to be more to the kid than that because that's what they say is his origin but we don't really hear that from the kid himself uh, he doesn't really have a lot of memories so it'll be really interesting to see how his story plays out i have a lot of theories about this stuff uh but uh, but that's good i think that's the biggest compliment i can give levio um and true is that uh, this storyline has already made me think of possibilities for where it's going to go and that's really hard to do for like a new book I mean there's a, a couple good solid image books that have come out over the past few years that have done that you know like east to west and there, there's been a lot of them and most of them the stuff I like Rick Remender a lot so uh, you know anyway a lot of independent stuff that I've read over the past years if they can pull you in in the first issue or two and they can start getting you to think of oh where's this going to go next like Saga was really good at that and you know um, and so it's like I like that. So I got it. That's the biggest compliment I can give to this book other than just the art because I'm a big fan of Levio's art style um, is that it just already is making me think of what's going to happen next, especially the way issue two ends because issue two is kind of more the origins of these characters. So you kind of see minus the kid, you still hear it from the laborer telling the story, but you get to see the laborer like uh, go to a bar and get drunk and he's like trying to get information, but he kind of screws up. And in doing so, the kid gets like his arm ripped off um, and by, by like a, a random bot out in town and so the wraith has to go and get his arm back and, and then in doing so like tears the arm off of the person who stole it uh, in the first place and, and there's like a lot of back and forth there and, and a lot of great moments where the wraith really does feel an extra responsibility for the kid i think it, there's more to it than that because they show his flashback and and like what he did wrong like what his crime was and it looks like he might have been responsible for other bots that look like the kids you know to die um so there was yeah there was you know him wiping out an area 
and then you see this one image of two bots and they look a lot like the kid and so i'm like oh is one of those the kid or is are they just other bots like the kid and that's why he has a connection to this kid um, i don't know for sure It'll be interesting to see where that goes to, uh, but he does take extra care in the kid and watching out for him to, to the point where the kid finds like a little uh, pterodactyl bot, you know, like a little fly. And, and it's like he finds it, but it's like it looks like pterodactyl kind of and he finds it and its ring was uh, wing was ripped off and the wraith actually fixes it for the kid and then like, you know, opens his hand and lets it fly away and kind of gives hope back to the kid as they're going on on their mission uh, because the kid is confused. He's scared. He doesn't really know what's going on, doesn't know what he did wrong, doesn't have any memories of anything. And they're like, yeah, that's because you were just created and you have a, a you know, a, a defect essentially that they branded uh, criminal activity or potential criminal activity. And that's why you're connected to us in this kill lock. Um, so yeah, and then like I said, the way issue two ends is is crazy because uh, basically they're like, well, wherever this kill lock is, you know, we're gonna find it. Like the kid is starting to get his hope back, and he's like, we're gonna find it, and we'll we'll find a way to survive. And then it cuts to some random sinkhole on a planet where there's all these dead robots, and they all have the kill lock logo like branded on them. So uh, so yeah, wherever this rumor is, it seems to be drawing them to a place that might get them killed. Uh, so yeah, I'm really digging this, uh, honestly. Uh, there's there's a couple things in it where I wasn't fully clear on, uh, but uh, maybe that'll be because the, the next few issues will flesh it out. But for the most part, the characters are really interesting, and that's always what pulls me into a story is characters. And this one has four really great characters. I really like the artisan. He's so twisted and weird. Um, the laborer, he's kind of almost sympathetic to him in a way because he tries. You can tell that he tries, but he's just not... He's not brains, you know, and he's not even brawn really, but he is, that was his job was to lift and shut hatches. So he's kind of built for brawn, but really the wraith is the muscle of the group. Uh, so, and then you have the kid who you're, you know, confused about like I, I think there's more to the kid than what we've learned uh but at the same time uh there is an innocence to the kid that kind of pulls you in uh so you so so if there is a twist there that would be awesome because i feel like most people probably won't see it coming if there is one if not and if he's just like the kid and this is all his backstory is true uh, then that still works for me. It still works for the story as well. Um, I'm just trying to read more into it because like I said, the, the book has really got me hooked. So if you haven't checked it out, I, I really recommend doing it. Uh, the Kill Lock 2 issues are out now and uh, it's through IDW. And I know because I talk a lot about, you know, mainstream comics on here, but on the Seek and Destroy show, I try to cover some indie stuff like Spawn. I'm a huge fan of Spawn and stuff. Uh, but, uh, but this was something that, you know, not just because a friend of mine uh, created it, but also because I love robots too, and the concept of it was really neat to me. So once I picked it, I was like, I'll give it a try. And I, I bought the first issue on digital because I was like, I don't know if I'll, I'll buy it in print. And then I liked it. I was like, wow, this is really good. And now I want them. So that way, if I see Levio at a convention coming up, I definitely want him to sign them at some point. Uh, so yeah, these are great. Uh, they're $3.99 each. Kill Lock 1 and 2 from IDW. I would say pick it up. I mean, honestly, if you're out there and you want to try a new indie book, and you want to try something different if you like robots uh it, there's a lot of swearing in this there's a lot of violence uh they they drop the f-bomb almost every single page so if you're into like hardcore r-rated stuff you know uh, this is definitely will you know tickle your fancy uh but i i highly recommend it out there for anyone who just wants something a little different if they if they don't if they're not following you know if they're a little tired of mainstream superheroes right now if they want to take a break or if they're just looking for another indie book to pick up and you were looking for a recommendation I recommend it. Like I said, I have some bias, but in all honesty, I enjoyed the book. Uh, and that, and that's, I think it's because Levio speaking my language, robots, uh, you know, <laughs> swear words aren't really my thing. Like, you know, that's one of my critiques is like, yeah, maybe it's a little excessive, but it mostly comes from one character. So at least it's consistent. So it's like, all right, it, it's, 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 you know, he thought about it. Like when he was like, all right, we're going to put a lot of swear words in this book, but it mainly comes from the artisan himself because he's like a crazy psychopath. So, um, you know, having that is, is kind of nice. And sometimes you'll get like other robots that come in that try to mess with these guys that might swear too. Uh, but for the most part, it comes from the artisan. And so because of that, it's consistent. So it's a nitpick from me, but not, you know, it's like, it would be a critique if everyone was swearing. Uh, but since it's mainly one character, it's more of a nitpick. Uh, but otherwise, great story, great fun, great characters. And I highly recommend it. Uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, you know, please do. And if you have, let me know what your thoughts are on the book down in the comments below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, I have my surgery tomorrow and I have a couple more videos. Uh, speaking of robots, I'm going to try to record some Transformer videos today before my roommate comes back. And then maybe later tonight, I'll try to record one or two other episodes and I'll edit these when I can. You know, I'm probably going to be on bed rest for the next few days. So I'll, I'll edit these when I can and I'll get them up to you, you know, as soon as possible. So thanks for being patient. Thanks for watching the show and I'll see you in the future. Peace.